Welcome back to this next video in which we are discussing hypothyroidism. So in the previous video we went over some of the major causes of hypothyroidism and in this video what I want to do is talk about some of the major symptoms of hypothyroidism and some of the major presentations of hypothyroidism. We'll then end the video by discussing the treatment for hypothyroidism. So we want to discuss symptoms then. So when we write S a little x like that, that stands for symptoms. So in order to understand symptoms then, we need to understand what do thyroid hormones actually do. So once T4 has been converted to T3 and T3 binds to its receptor and alters gene expression, what actually happens? Well, thyroid hormones affect the function of loads of tissues in the body, all over the body. And they alter the basal level of activity in tissues. They alter the basal metabolic rate, the BMR. This is one of the major things that thyroid hormones do. And the higher thyroid hormone level is, the more metabolic activity is encouraged in tissues around the body. So if thyroid hormone levels go too low, as in hypothyroidism, what ends up happening is your basal metabolic rate, your BMR, goes right down. Now, what are some of the consequences then of this? Well, if your basal metabolic rate goes down, you're evidently going to consume less calories. That means that if you eat the same amount, i.e. you're putting the same amount of calories into your body, but you're consuming less of them, you're burning less of them, then the re remainder will be stored and therefore you will gain weight. So weight gain is one of the common things that happens in hypothyroidism. In addition, if your basal metabolic rate goes down, this can make you feel very tired. So chronic tiredness is also a very important symptom of hypothyroidism. In fact, above all others, I would put that one as number one, chronic tiredness. Write that one down and underline it. And we'll come back and discuss chronic tiredness in a moment. So lower basal metabolic rate will make you feel tired. It'll make you gain weight. In addition, because of the effects of thyroid hormones on the heart, they're going to lower basal metabolic rates in the heart if they go down. If the level goes down, basal metabolic rate in the heart will go down. What is the consequence of that? Well, heart rate goes down. If thyroid hormone levels go down, basal metabolic rate in the heart goes down, what does that actually mean? It means that the rate at which the heart is going to beat is going to go down, and also the force with which the heart contracts is going to be reduced. That is going to lower cardiac output, and therefore blood pressure will come down. So commonly, people with hypothyroidism, their heart rate might be a little bit low, they might be bradycardic, and their blood pressure might be uh, lower than usual as well. Another common symptom to be aware of is it can make people feel quite low mood. So I'll put this with chronic tiredness. It can make people feel a little bit depressed, low in mood. Other things to be aware of are the effects on the gut. Of course, if basal metabolic rate goes down, basal metabolic rate in the gut going down means that the gut is going to be moving around less. If it moves around less, then it's going to have more of a problem moving contents through it, and therefore people can end up constipated when their basal metabolic rate goes down. So I'll put this here, constipation. In addition, another obvious one, if you're consuming less calories and burning less calories, then your production of heat is going to go down, and therefore you can end up feeling cold a lot of the time. So cold intolerance is another major symptom. Finally, one that is a little bit disconnected from the rest of this diagram that we've got here. It's a little bit more difficult to see how this is related to basal metabolic rate going down, so I'll put it separately. Um, in women, it can cause menorrhagia, which is the fancy word for heavy periods. So they can end up losing more blood each time they have a period than um, they would have done prior to having hypothyroidism. 
So these are some of the major symptoms then of hypothyroidism. So you can see that most of them all link up to this idea that basal metabolic rate is going to go down uh, if thyroid hormone levels go down. You're going to burn less calories, so you're going to feel cold a lot of the time, you're going to gain weight, you're going to feel tired, maybe feel low mood. When the heart's basal metabolic rate goes down, heart rate goes down and blood pressure consequently goes down. When the intestine's basal metabolic rate goes down, that can result in constipation. And then this one that I've stuck on separately, um, you can, um, in women, you can end up with heavy periods. I, I personally don't know how that relates to basal metabolic rate going down. If you do understand that there's a link between this and this, uh, I would be delighted to hear about it in the comments section. However, when thyroid hormone levels do go down, one of the accepted uh, symptoms that occurs in women is that their periods can become very heavy. And in fact, this is one of the major presentations where you do need to check uh, the person's thyroid hormone levels. So let's just discuss now some of the major presentations. So I'm going to circle then the ones of these symptoms that usually present as hypothyroidism and which clinically you need to be suspicious of hypothyroidism. So chronic tiredness is the one above all others. I'm going to circle it even though I've underlined it already. In primary care, you will see a huge number of people who come in and tell you that they are fed up of feeling tired all the time. That is their presenting complaint, that they feel tired all the time. Chronic tiredness. And when you're taking this history, some of the really important things to obviously screen for is what's their mood like. Because if they are profoundly depressed, then the chronic tiredness is most likely a symptom of their psychiatric disorder, their depression, and therefore they need to be treated for the depression and that will probably uh, help, the hype, uh, help the tiredness. The other major thing that you should uh, look for in the history is are they having unexplained weight loss? Because of course if they're tired and they're experiencing a lot of weight loss then that's a red flag for some form of cancer and you need to start screening them for different forms of cancer so you need to uh, do blood work and uh, have a feel for enlarged lymph nodes and things like that. Some of the major blood tests though that you need to look out for if someone is presenting with chronic tiredness is you need to check them for hypothyroidism. So hypothyroidism is one of the major things that you need to check if someone's presenting with um, chronic tiredness. And the other thing that you need to check is are they anemic because anemia uh, can cause chronic tiredness as well. So these are two of the major blood tests that it's important to do in an individual who is presenting with chronic tiredness and for whom you have not managed to elucidate a possible reason in the history. M many people who present with chronic tiredness, it will turn out that they do not have hypothyroidism, they do not have anemia, and they uh, do not have any form of cancer, they don't have depression. Instead, what they have is idiopathic tiredness. And I will put this up here. So one of the major things that it turns out most people who present with chronic tiredness actually have is just idiopathic chronic fatigue. Idiopathic means that we cannot find a medical reason for it. So idiopathic chronic fatigue. But before deciding that uh, their tiredness is probably idiopathic, you do need to check their thyroid function and um, check them for anemia. So that is one of the major presentations where you need to consider hypothyroidism as a possible diagnosis. And a certain fraction of the people who present with chronic tiredness will actually have hypothyroidism rather than it being an idiopathic chronic tiredness. So that's one of the major presentations for hypothyroidism. Another major presentation where you would consider hypothyroidism is unexplained weight gain. Now, if someone comes into primary care and says that they've been gaining weight a lot recently, they are eating exactly the same as they were before they were gaining weight, they do not understand why they were gaining weight, and quite often they will have been on the internet and decided that they might be hypothyroid, they might have an underactive thyroid, and they will ask you to check their thyroid gland. That is another 
situation in which you should check someone's thyroid gland, especially if they've actually asked you to check it because they're worried it may be underactive. So that's another presentation where you would want to check someone's thyroid gland. And again, it may well be the case that you do not find evidence that they're hypothyroid, in which case the weight gain is um, not explained by the hypothyroidism and explained by other matters. Um, but it is an important thing to rule out. So that's another presentation where you would check people's thyroid levels. And the other big one on this list is menorrhagia. So if you've got a lady uh, who is having heavy periods, one of the things that you need to check for is could they be hypothyroid? It's again more likely that they won't be hypothyroid and instead the menorrhagia will be primary menorrhagia where it's again idiopathic. We don't have a medical explanation. There's nothing wrong. It's just there and it's awkward it may well lead to iron deficiency anemia but it's not a consequence of any medical disease however before coming to the conclusion that it is primary menorrhagia it's very important to rule out uh, hypothyroidism so those are the three major presentations here where you would need to check someone's thyroid level if someone was coming with constipation it's very unlikely that they would have their thyroid checked because simple constipation is extremely common and it's recognised that it's far more likely that they quite simply have simple constipation rather than hypothyroidism. If someone was uh, presenting with cold intolerance, that's quite a rare presentation, but again, that would sort of uh, flag up um, maybe hypothyroidism and you would check their thyroid levels. However, these three, I would say, are the uh, major presentations to be aware of for hypothyroidism. Right, so there we go. There are symptoms and some of the major presentations discussed. Let us finally discuss treatment for hypothyroidism. So this is extremely simple. You quite simply prescribe them what they are missing. You give them thyroxine. So we give them the drug levothyroxine. That is quite simply a certain optical isomer of thyroxine. That is all the levo means. Do not get scared by the levo. It is quite simply thyroxine. This is just telling you about some fancy chemistry. It's telling you about the specific optical isomer of thyroxine that you are using. If you do not understand what optical isomers are, do not worry about it. It is just thyroxine. It's a certain form of thyroxine. And the typical dose for an adult uh, is usually between 100 and 200 uh, micrograms per day. Of course, however, it varies depending on the individual and uh, doctors will gradually uh, titrate the amount of the drug that people are taking uh, to make sure that the blood levels and the symptoms are better. This, by the way, levothyroxine, it is a tablet. Uh, you take it orally and it will be absorbed by the gut and it does not get broken down by the gut. So that's very convenient that we can give this hormone uh, orally and it doesn't get converted by the gut or by the liver into something else. It actually makes it into the bloodstream as thyroxine. So that means that we can just give thyroid replacement therapy like so. So that's the way that we treat hypothyroidism by just giving the person what they don't have, which is the thyroxine hormone. So thank you very much for watching this video. That concludes our discussion of hypothyroidism. I hope you have enjoyed it and learned something.